A good landing page can be the difference between a wildly profitable marketing campaign and an endless money pit. Landing pages can make or break your marketing efforts, but they're also the easiest part of your campaign to optimize. Here at StrikePoint Media, we have a list of 10 landing page elements that we use whenever we build a landing page. So in this video, I'm gonna give you those 10 best practices, as well as walk you through one of our landing pages that is currently converting at upwards of 75%. So if you want to increase your conversion rates and qualify your leads, then stay tuned. We'll jump in in just a second. Hi everyone, my name's Hannah. I'm a marketing manager here at StrikePoint Media and welcome to our YouTube channel where you subscribe for weekly videos on cutting edge digital marketing tactics to help scale your business online. If you like this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel below. Before I jump in, I wanna let you guys know about our clicks to conversions report where we send out our top case studies and show you the inner workings on some of our most profitable marketing campaigns. In this free report, you'll get to see what's working and what's not working for our clients in real time. If you're interested, subscribe to Clicks to Conversions report for free in the description below. Okay, let's dive in. So this landing page is one of our highest converting landing pages we've ran in the agency for the past few years. It converts upwards of 75% across all media channels. And although this lead magnet is an ebook, it can be whatever you guys are utilizing, a cheat sheet, a presentation, so on and so forth. So one of the first things and one of what I think is the most important on your landing page is a bold headline. So not only does this headline need to be clean in font and color, um, but also the copy. Is it catchy to the person? Is it in alignment with where they came from, whether it was the email or the ad? Um, a bold headline is super important with keeping them on this page. And along with that is a subheadline. Um, and the subheadline will be relatively short, just like the headline, but something that's supportive with what you just stated in your header. Um, these are the two things that someone will likely look at first, and it's important that it's clean in the copy and in the design. So once we've nailed down our headline and our subheadline, um, one of the next important things when it comes to the landing page copy and content is um, supportive descriptions. They don't need to be in a paragraph format, um, but what we've seen work best is break down three to four bullet points about why someone would be opting in for your lead magnet, uh, what they're going to receive, tease a little bit about the benefits on why they would be interested, and just provide a little bit more information so it makes it that much easier for someone to opt in and become interested. Um, and then the next thing is having all of the content, so the headline, the subheadline, and the supportive description be above the fold. And what that means is um, above the fold so that no one has to scroll to see this content. So uh, when it's on desktop, you haven't scrolled yet and it's still just that rectangle. Or on your phone, it's all placed before you have to scroll. This way, no one has to find stuff. It pops up right there in front of them and it's the most important information that you want them to see right away. So anything above the fold must be not only clean so that it doesn't cut anything off, but that your most important pieces and that you want them to see right away is above the fold. And then as you can see on this landing page, we have all of this up front. So it almost looks like it's your entire page, but then they'll keep scrolling and they'll find more information. Um, some of this additional information uh, under the fold can consist of anything supportive or credible. And so you guys will see on this page here, I have uh, previous featured on logos. And these are very credible sources like Forbes, Bloomberg, The Wall Street Journal, USA Today. They can be any logos of a, a publisher or a website or even like a TV show or segment that has featured your lead magnet. Um, and it could also be testimonials too. 
maybe someone has opted in for this ebook before and they loved it and they wrote a testimonial through email or on Twitter, we can feature what that person said um, to show the person that's looking through this page that people actually are looking at it and using it and it is beneficial. So anything that can be supportive from a third party and not just us listing on our landing page and that just helps with the credibility and convincing someone that they would be interested too. In addition to that, having a clear call to action is incredibly important. Not only is it supportive with the content you have on your page, but people's attention spans are really short and you wanna make sure that it's bold with what you're going to deliver them. So our call to action here is to get this free guide. And so there's a form right there. It clearly states, fill out the form to get your guide. All they need to do is fill out their email address and first name. And so we want to make sure that call to action, that CTA is as clear as possible. So not only on this example, we have it above the fold and next to the ebook itself, but we also have um, a button down at the bottom of the page that if it's clicked on, it will drop anchor or scroll up to the form so they can opt in. Um, we want to make sure that's as clean and clear as possible and also include a, a bright and bold submit button. So this one, as you can see, the whole page is blue and green, but we made that button orange so that it stands out and it doesn't blend in with the design. And uh, that is super important to make sure it catches their eye and they know exactly how to fill out the form and submit it. And then after the CTA and the bold button, um, I know I kind of went into this, but it's really important that your design is friendly and inviting and clean. So with this page, everything is branded with the same colors, the same fonts, um, and that style is important for it to look consistent. Um, and then when I, what I mean by friendly and inviting is what we've seen in our experience is colors like blue and green, yellow and orange are more opportunistic for someone. They can mean that they're either successful or something, um, successful in something, completed something, submitted, um, but colors like red and darker colors usually mean cancel or um, you lost something or it's a failure. And so usually we tend to stay away from colors like red for the submit buttons because um, someone's gonna glance at this and decide subconsciously if they're gonna submit it or not. And if it looks like they're about to cancel something or lose something, then the conversion rate goes way down. So we usually like to keep not only the design of the whole page, but also the submit button and the CTA button uh, friendly so it catches their attention and subconsciously they will be better inclined to submit. And then last thing that's super important is screen responsiveness. So a lot of designers out there and copywriters build their page based off of desktop. We're all working off of either our display desktop screens or our laptop, but actually a lot of people nowadays are on their cell phones. So it's super important that we response this page for mobile and tablet users. Um, I think 90% of advertising nowadays is on your cell phone and Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, all of those. And so the design of your mobile page is more important than your desktop page. So when we response this down to a mobile dimension, it's important that everything is spaced out correctly above the fold, um, fonts are the correct size, being that you're on mobile, that they're large enough for them to read, but still fits all the content that you need. Um, and so mobile responsiveness and tablet responsiveness are super important as not many users are on desktop. Those are all the tips I have for this page, but I'll give you guys one bonus tip that I don't have on this example, but we use on a lot of our landing and sales pages is including a timer. So you can include a timer on um, like a sticky bar at the top of your page or near your CTA form and set it to five minutes or depending on your page uh, length, if it's more longer form, maybe set it to 10 minutes or it could be less. But 
adding that um, sensitivity of time on your page is gonna push someone to opt in quicker and make a decision. So adding custom CSS to include a timer or anything that creates a sense of urgency is only gonna help increase your conversion rates. And that's a bonus tip for you guys. Now before you leave, I wanna take a poll. What's your conversion rate on your top landing page? And what's your conversion rate on your worst landing page? Leave a comment down below, and if you enjoyed this video, I want you to smash that like button, and also make sure to subscribe to our Clicks to Conversions report, where you get an inside look at our most profitable marketing campaigns and funnels. This is where you guys can see what's working and not working for our clients in real time. The link is down in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you want weekly videos on digital marketing tips, tricks, and tactics to help scale your business online, then subscribe to the channel below. We'll see you next time.